Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a three month check in with you guys about how life has been going as a new dermatology resident. So if this is your first time watching any of my videos, welcome to my channel. My channel is all about giving advice to anyone who's thinking about studying in medicine or currently studying in medicine. So to my update, since I started dermatology residency, now that I'm three months in, life has been getting a little bit more into a groove, into a pattern. I understand a lot more my expectations and I've been able to schedule things a little bit better so I feel a lot less stressed. When it comes to studying, studying is a lot more enjoyable and no longer feels like a chore. I'm starting to, the stuff that I'm reading in the textbooks I'm seeing in clinic and what I see in clinic, maybe I hadn't heard of it before, but like a week or so later, I might end up reading it in the textbook. So it feels so much more exciting. Studying no longer feels as painful as it first did in my first month. Um, the books that I told you guys that I was ordering on top of the books I already had finally came in. This here is my dermoscopy book. If you look here, you would see that they have some examples of what skin lesions look like and what you should expect to see under dermatoscope. This is a dermatoscope. This is what um, the dermatologist uses to take a look at lesions on your skin. And this is the light on, taking a look at your skin. And then you see different patterns in your skin lesions that help to characterize what the um, skin lesion is. Not all the time does that help you um, diagnose a lesion. A lot of times you might have to still end up biopsying. But that's still very helpful. This, the dermatoscope is like pretty much a dermatologist st stethoscope. Dermoscopy book, I don't read as much. It's not really something that I read routinely. Usually I look at it for when I'm looking at specific lesions that I just have questions about. The book that I do use very routinely is the second book that I told you guys that I ordered, which is a book that helps review everything that I've read over the week. It sums up all the books that I usually read and it sums it up really quickly in just a few pages. So it's so helpful. So this is the book love this book it makes life so much easier so studying has gotten better still sometimes I just don't want to study but that's always anybody that's how you were probably in pre-med med school whatever but in general it's a lot more enjoyable so I'm really happy about that I've been able to study a little bit through the week schedule it throughout my weekend but it's been it's been good the next the next thing is traveling I know I told you guys how much Driving we had to do in my residency program, that still is a bit of a struggle. I actually was contemplating moving into the city um, because of it, because I was just like really unhappy with how much I've been driving COVID. The traffic that, you know, calmed down during the pandemic has now re just returned back to the regular traffic patterns. So I have been really stressed out, but... I was like speaking to other people and a lot of people travel to work and I'm like, oh my God, am I being a brat? Also the price for living in the city is just so ridiculous. I'm like, let me try to toughen it out a little bit longer and see how it is. Driving to work at the, our regular clinic is um is fine. It's just driving to some of our satellite sites that have been on the rougher side. So we'll see how that goes, but that's still a bit of a struggle. So that's definitely, like I said, important to think about when you guys are thinking about residency programs. Do you have to travel? And if you have to travel, how far do you have to travel? Because if you don't like driving or you're not great at driving or whatever it is, that's definitely something to think about. So what does my normal day look like? My day varies from day to day, depending on what site I'm at. Sometimes I could be at the VA where we see a lot of the veterans and they usually come in with like skin cancer checks. Um, and a lot of skin cancers and we get to do a lot of procedures there and other days I'll be at like the main clinics and the main clinics we see such variety I could see like um, acne skin checks we see um, really rare disorders where the attending will be like this is something that you might see only once in your career or twice in your career and I've seen a few of those already in my first three months which is just so exciting to me um, we, I see hair loss. I see um, patients of all different backgrounds. I absolutely just love the diversity that I see in my um, patient population and the clinical presentations of di diseases. So my day really, really varies, but no day looks the same as the day before or the day after. And I love that aspect about um, dermatology. So my thoughts on doing like procedures is that they're so fun and like my very first procedure I was so nervous but then when you're doing it you're like oh my god this is this is getting good and then when you see the final part you're like wow this looks really great and my program is really good because I think they have a great um, balance 
of, you know, monitoring you, but then also giving you the liberty to like learn on your own. So uh, I felt like I get that and you feel kind of like you're thrown in, but then my attending's like always there if I need questions and like pops in at each point to like make sure the procedure is going well. So I have been enjoying procedures. You know, I'm still really slow, but that doesn't mean it's not fun and I can't wait to get better at it and start doing more procedures. The thing is that we, our clinic has been affected by COVID. The clinic has gone back to regular capacity, almost regular capacity now of seeing patients but before then we've had decreased patients so we have um, decreased opportunities for procedures and patients have to get COVID testing if they're getting a surgery so uh, we so sometimes if they don't get that test they can't get the procedure done so that also has slowed us down but even with that I can't wait to like just keep doing more patient interactions I also completely enjoy as I told you guys I wanted I knew, I always knew I wanted to do something outpatient mainly because I love the continuity of care and building a relationship with my patients. And I've been able to see some patients now multiple times and see that continuity. I've even had some patients like ask for me to be their doctor, which isn't um, possible right now, but it just makes me feel like I'm really building relationship with patients and I'm having great interactions and that just makes me happy. And really that's the stuff that makes you excited to go to work, you know? So I've been having the continuity of care that I've been looking for. I can't wait to start seeing that more. And we start our residency clinic where we start having our own patients in, I think it's January. I know it's sometime early next year so I'm super excited for that right now the patients that I see are the patients of my attending additionally I've been trying to throw in things that I enjoy um, throughout my days as well mainly because like just focusing on work is, is exhausting I was starting to feel a little, really burnt out after my first month of residency I was just so focused on trying to get things done I don't think that's abnormal that's like kind of expected so I've been starting to do a little bit of things like so you guys already know about the YouTube channel even though I had to take a little bit of a break mainly because my computer crashed and then on top of my computer crashing that just made work more difficult because I really need my computer for a lot of different things I need to do for work and then doing um, the YouTube video so that was just too much so I took a little break from that but I started that back up and I've done other things such as speaking at career, a career fair and speaking to potential applicants. You guys know how much I love mentoring. So doing things like that make me happy. I also prioritize doing things outside of work with my loved ones. You know, the other day I had my goddaughter come visit. Um, we went to the zoo. I visit my mom a lot. I go on a lot of dinner dates with my friends and my boyfriend. I've been really making sure to prioritize my life outside of work because life, because if I don't pay attention, work will really consume me because there's always something to be done. So I've made sure to prioritize my own um, personal life. So that has been my update. In summary, life has gotten a lot better. You know, I'm still adapt. I'm still adjusting, still adapting. There's still some stuff I wish would be a little bit better. Looking forward to in the next few months is that in the next few months, I'll have months um, dedicated to lymphoma month where I spend time in our multidisciplinary lymphoma clinic. Then in January, I'll be just spending a month focused on pathology. I'm really weak at pathology. So I'm really excited to have a month just dedicated to it because I'm just really confused of what I'm looking at under the microscope. And even when it's explained to me, I'm like, okay, I think I finally got, got it. And then like two weeks later, I'm like, what is this again? It's been rough. <laughs> I'm also excited for a lot to adjust a lot more into my residency program. And yeah, so if you have any questions about what life has been like as a dermatology resident, make sure to leave me a comment. Like this video if you enjoyed this. If you want to get to know me a little bit better, make sure to follow me on Instagram at the real skin I'm in underscore MD. Subscribe to my channel now so you know when my latest videos are coming out. Have a good one and I'll see you later. Bye.